God has already decreed his will for you. We'll talk about that more in a moment. He's already decreed what he's going to do. And he's decreed it before you've ever talked to him about it. So let's get this straight. Prayer activates the decree and the will of God. It doesn't make it happen. It just grabs it because it has already been decreed to happen. Prayer is the mechanism that grabs something out of the invisible realm so you can see it at work in the visible physical realm. So God has decreed for every Christian the sum total of your life, what he will do and what he won't do and when he plans to do it, but it's with a condition. And the condition is prayer. The reason why many of us pray so generally, Lord bless me, Lord help me, which means you've said absolutely nothing, you, you've been so vague, is because you don't have a point of contact that you know about, that you can point to in scripture that becomes the basis of your request. Nothing you want is going to happen in your timing. It almost never does. How many times have you wanted to have something to happen at a particular time and date and it didn't happen? You know how many times that's happened to you? It happens all the time. So everything you ask God for, it comes in a process. It's going to happen. Especially if you write it down. That's, that's the secret. Everything you want has to be written. This is a principle of success that isn't often taught. It's the never giving up that hurts people the most. You pray for something, you ask God for something. Then when it don't happen in your time, then you create these human excuses. Well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. I guess it wasn't the Lord's will. It, uh, it'll never happen. It just didn't happen in your timing. But I can almost assure you, nothing you want is going to happen in your timing. It almost never does. How many times have you wanted to have something to happen at a particular time and date and it didn't happen? You know how many times that's happened to you? It happens all the time. There's a scripture that tells you that you must do this. It's Habakkuk 2 and 2. Just go read it. Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, tarry means take a long time. Wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. Everything you write on paper that God puts in your mind and your imagination, he puts it in your imagination because that's a sign of things to come. That's what he puts everything for you, he places it in your imagination. If you write it down and keep the faith, you'll get everything on that paper. He has stopped the miracles that we've become accustomed to him seeing because he is no longer using miracles to convince the unconvincible. He is just showing himself alive to his own. Are you one of his online tonight? Are you one of his online in the building tonight? Are you one of his? Listen for God to show you some things that other people don't see. And you don't need their confirmation. You don't need their confirmation. When God has spoken to you, you don't need their confirmation. God has spoken to you. You've been disappointed because God didn't do what you thought he was going to do. But just because God didn't do what you thought he was going to do doesn't mean that the Lord is not with you. They thought that Jesus had come to restore them nationally, to get involved with politics, to overthrow the Roman oppression, but he came to destroy the works of the devil. Just because God didn't do what you thought he was going to do doesn't mean that God isn't doing something in your life. Get rid of your depression because hidden in your depression and your discouragement is arrogance. I said if God didn't do it, it wasn't supposed to happen. Because God has a plan for your life. And if God would have done what you expected him to do, it would have messed up the plan. God had a plan for your life and it wasn't time for him to overthrow Rome. He ultimately overthrew the powers of Rome outside of Jerusalem. He brought it down to naught, but it was in God's own timing, not your time. So you don't have a right to be bitter with God because he didn't do what you thought he was going to do. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. What God has for you is for you. What God has planned for you is for you. And what we have to learn, rather than to be dominant with God, is to be submissive with God. To submit to his will. To submit to his way. That doesn't mean that you're a mindless robot. Submission is to submit to the mission. 
Submission doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you're frail. It doesn't mean you're mindless. It means that you have a mission that's more important than you. Every person listening at me tonight should have a mission that's more important than you. That God is aggressive enough to intervene in your understanding of who he is. Because we all see through a glass darkly. We don't know everything that there is to know about God, even though we are legitimately disciples. We, we still don't know everything that there is to know about God. And they were sharing information based on their uh, understanding of what God had done. I want to talk to you today about right on time. We all have things we're waiting on. Waiting for a dream to come to pass, waiting for our health to improve, waiting to meet the right person. We know God put the promise in our heart, but we wonder why it's taking so long. But the scripture talks about how there is an appointed time for the promise to be fulfilled. If there's a right time, that means any other time is the wrong time. If you don't understand that God will always be right on time, then the delays, the detours, the waiting periods will cause you to be frustrated. It's not enough to just trust God. You have to trust His timing. He knows when you're ready. He knows when it's the right person, when to open the door, when to turn it around. If it's not happening yet, you have to be mature enough to accept that it's not the right time. Instead of living upset, why don't you do like David and say, God, my times are in your hands. You know when to bless me, when to promote me, when to deliver me. God, I trust your timing. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. It's easy to have faith. It's easy to believe for your dreams, but faith without patience can get you into trouble. Just ask Moses. As a young man, he knew he was supposed to deliver the Israelites. He had the promise, but he didn't have the patience. He got in a hurry and killed a man that was mistreating a Hebrew slave. His heart was right, but his timing was off. He had to flee for his life. He spent 40 years in the desert, all because he got out of God's timing. Psalm 106 says, they did not wait for God's plan to unfold. And what you're believing for may be taking longer than you thought. You're not making progress not seeing a dream come to pass, but God knows what he's doing. Don't try to force things to happen. You don't have to promote yourself, manipulate people, convince them to like you. Yes, we should be determined, but you don't have to beat down a door. At the right time, things will fall into place. At the right time, the right people will show up. Now do your part and wait for the promise to unfold. You're not falling behind. You're not being left out. You're right on schedule. God has an incredible life for you. He really does. But, but you ain't gonna get there if you give up. You, you can't get to what God got for you if you're afraid. Now I know taking chances is, is kind of fretful, but the best things in life is on the other side of fear. But one of the things that I've always done to help overcome my fears is I make my dreams bigger than all my fears. I have dreams that's so big that not, not getting there is just unacceptable. It, it doesn't make any sense for you not to have the life that you dream of. It does not make any sense. God really does want to use you as an example of what he can do. You just gotta volunteer. But you got to be willing to go through something to get to it. Success ain't free. They ain't passing out money, man. Anybody sending none to your house, that ain't how this works. You got to go get it. 